Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Straight Talk with Roger Hunt Unscripted. Today we have the pleasure of being with Ms. Cheryl Oliver, who is the Executive Director of St. Louis Effort for AIDS, and Ms. Carolyn Johnson, who is the Director of Preventive Services. And as always, of all of our shows, we want to say thank you for joining us and tuning in today. Welcome to the show, Cheryl and thank Carolyn. You. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Um, Cheryl and uh, Carolyn, I'm going to start with you first, Cheryl. Kind of tell us a little bit about St. Louis Effort for AIDS and what do you do here as Executive Director? Uh, St. Louis Effort for AIDS was started by a group of volunteers uh, in 1985 when people were really dying of the disease. Okay. And um, it's a good story. They started it just out of help and then finally turned it into a 501c3, which is a nonprofit okay. organization. Today we have uh, client services, which are case managers who work with um, people who are living with the disease. Mm -hmm. And we have prevention services, which is our um, community outreach effort to get people tested so they know their status and so they can then take care of themselves if they're positive, get into care, and if they're negative, they can stay negative. Oh, okay, okay. And Carolyn, as part of, I'm going to just kind of jump back and forth to you ladies, as part of preventive services, I understand mm -hmm. that's your role here? It right. is, and so the prevention department, um, we do two things, prevention for people who are currently HIV negative, and also prevention for people who are already HIV positive. And so that what that is comprised of, um, it's our testing services, which we do okay. test for HIV with a rapid test. We also test for syphilis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia, and hepatitis C. Um, we also do community outreach to local bars, um, church groups, street outreach, um, to barbershops, beauty shops, anywhere where the prioritized or high-risk populations are to make sure that we're taking services okay. to them. And what's the rapid test? Um, the rapid HIV test okay. is a finger stick and okay. it takes 15 minutes to get an HIV antibody uh, result back. Okay. So, and then the type of people or who are the people that you normally care about the type of, or you don't want to can answer it really, it doesn't matter. Who are the type of people or some of the people that may come in as far as age, demographics, or that you all see coming to your organization? It's really a broad spectrum. We, this agency does focus mostly um, on adults. There are other agencies in the city that work with women and children and families, but we mostly see um, uh, adult uh, men who have sex with men. That's mostly what we see, and that's part of what we're really funded to focus on because that's where the, the disease is still the most prominent. Okay, so as you mentioned funded, funding, who are you funded by? We have a broad funding base. We have some government grants that are funneled through, they're originally from the CDC, um, and they're funneled through different uh, state departments or city departments of health. And then we have um, United Way funding. We're very proud about that. Okay. We've had United Way funding. I think we were the first, well, we were the first aid service organization in St. Louis, uh, in Missouri, I believe, and we were the first one funded by United Way. Oh, okay. And we're the only one that's funded by United Way. So that's a very, it's, and they, they're very generous with us. We have uh, individual donors. Okay. We have funding events. Our Dining Out for Life is coming up. And we have Thirst for Life. Those are our two signature events. And then we also have Foundation Giving. Okay. Now I understand there's, uh, with those three, the Pets for Paws, is it Paws for Pets? Uh, Paws are wonderful support. Paws, okay, there you go. Yes, the Paws program. It's one of our, it's, a, it's, it's just a beautiful program because what it does is it enables people who are living with HIV who may be very low income, they may not be able to travel, they can't buy food or veterinary care for their pets at a time when they need them the most. Okay. You know, they need that companionship. And so what uh, the Paws program does is we provide monthly pet food Veterinary, veterinary care or uh, and medications like the heartworm and those kinds of things. So we make sure that people can keep their pets, keep their pets healthy and comfortable okay. right when they need them okay. the most. So now going back to the dining out for life and the thirst for life, now that involves some of the local restaurants, correct? Yes, in fact, Dining Out for Life, we only use local restaurants. Um, okay. We don't go with franchises or anything like okay. that, so we work with the, the, the restaurants. And we really have what we think are the very best restaurants in town. Okay. It's a little bit competitive. And they provide part of the, the way the event raises money is they, 
they get part of their benefits on that day to EFA. And then what we'll do at the end of the show, we're going to uh, put some information up on the, at the bottom of the screen to, to where they can participate and then also dates and things of that nature. And it's not just this year, because this is an annual event that you're doing every yeah. year. So, it's, the fourth so it's the last Thursday of every April. Last Thursday of every April, okay. So that's great to know because you want the public to be involved and that's yeah, kind of a, sure. uh, a good thing to do to support you know, a great organization. Um, one of the other things, uh, with the various types of STDs that are out there, what is most prominent or prevalent that you all see that come up, or is it just across the board? <laughs> it's and, not, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, gonorrhea and chlamydia uh, are, have, they, we've had high rates in St. Louis for a long time. Okay. And those rates are particularly high amongst African American males and females. Um, they make up, uh, and I, I just have some information for that, okay. for gonorrhea, 45% of of the female cases are African American, or of all the cases are African American females, and the additional 45% of all the cases are African American males. Wow. And um, that the numbers are higher in chlamydia, and 51% of chlamydia infections are amongst African American females. So is it just a matter of educating, or is it just is what's? I think there are so many factors that um, that affect that rate. You know, some of them are, it is a lack of education or, um, you know, education is not getting to the right places. There are also things like socioeconomic mm -hmm. um, factors to consider. You know, um, for any mother, mm -hmm. they will put the needs of their dependents before themselves. And so if they have money to buy a bus ticket to take their kid to school or to go to the clinic, they're going to take their kid to school. Okay. Or if they have to choose between feeding their kid and getting treated for STDs, they're going to feed their kid. And so, you know, there's so many, you know, there's power dynamics in relationships, there's stigma, um, where sometimes, you know, if in a relationship, depending on the power dynamic, if you don't want to have a conversation about, you know, hey, I want to let you know that I have gonorrhea or chlamydia, then maybe you won't go find out. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, we've had we've had feedback from people who have come in symptomatic and, you know, a fear of knowing. I was just going to say the, the fear of knowing, the fear of not knowing, which right. is worse. Exactly. Uh, so, so I know, Cheryl, you mentioned, you know, mostly adults coming in for the HIV portion and the testing. With the gonorrhea with the chlamydia, is it just very spectrum of age ranges? It's are, younger. It's younger. Um, we're testing more people between the ages of 18 and 35. And really, that's important because that's where the numbers are. That's where the rates of infection are. And in fact, uh, if I remember correctly, I don't have the number in front of me, but age 15 to 24 um, amongst African Americans is the highest rates overall. Wow. In, in new HIV cases as well. Wow. Yes. So amongst black men who have sex with men. Um, so I, and I know you mentioned the, the testing and uh, when you go out to your what do you call it, the social service, the preventive services that you part of the preventive services yeah, going community out to outreach. community yeah. outreach. Uh, what type of you know, are you going to schools? Or are you going to? I know you said bars and clubs. You mentioned bars. I don't know the clubs or bathhouses. Or, yeah. Okay. So all of those places just to kind of educate and make aware. Uh, strolls. Strolls. What about like I say, uh, barber shops, beauty okay. shops? Okay. Okay. So you do all of those open. Yes. Now, how are you? How are you received? You know, you, you go into some of these places and. Well, Cheryl and I aren't going. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do sometimes. I, I still do some <laughs> outreach with the prevention team. The prevention team is made up of the population that we're targeting. Okay. And our priority populations are African American females, um, African American and Black men who have sex with men and white men who have sex with men. Okay. Though that's where the numbers are for HIV and for STDs. And so uh, there's there are individuals on the team from each of those populations. And so I guess our approach in trying to be client-centered is to have clients feel more comfortable or potential clients feel more comfortable being approached by someone that they can relate to or someone um, you know that you know it doesn't feel like um, you know, the government's coming to talk to them about right. STDs. You know, it, it's a very much a community approach by their peers. And our mobile testing unit has to, it's been around for uh, 15? Since 2003. 2003. So it's been around for a long time, and the people who, uh, who are in the testing unit have 
earned the respect and the trust of the community. And so uh, there are actually times when the mobile testing unit goes out and people just come over and to say hello, come in, maybe have a cup of coffee, get out of cold. Um, and it's unmarked. So yeah, okay. when they see it, they know that the RV. Okay. Yeah. okay. So someone coming into the office, they're tested. Uh, of course, you, you're, you're hoping for that they're, they're tested negative for any right. one of the STDs. Of course. But someone coming in tests positive, how do you handle them or I guess it's a cultural shock to them or, or shock initially and then the type of what do you do from there as far as services that you may offer or getting them help? Um, well, the rapid test that we do, mm -hmm. if the result comes back positive, it's actually a preliminary positive result. Mm -hmm. So it's coming back positive for an antibody response in the body. And so we'll send off an additional specimen to the state health lab and that will confirm with a Western Black confirmatory test whether it is in fact, you know, for some reason, sometimes um, there will be an antibody response in the body that shows up on the test that, that might not be an HIV positive result. And so that Western blot will tell us for sure if it's HIV. And then after that, we give them, we connect them with the linkage to care number and the HEAT team at the St. Louis City Health Department. And that phone number is 872-1431. So that's where we send them. And that's where if anyone needs to be connected to services, that 872-1431, that's the phone number they call. And there will be someone who answers that and contacts them and makes sure that uh, they're, they, they're spoken to and are connected if they need case management services. Okay. And it's a 3140 yard phone? Yes. yes. The other thing I think to mention there is if somebody's in the office, they get tested, they also get counseling. Okay. We, our guys are, they're trained, in fact, they block off how long, 30 minutes to 45 minutes? Between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on how many tests. It, it only takes a few minutes to do a test, mm -hmm. but we block off that time because we do the preliminary, we do some, you know, we have a, a questionnaire that we have to fill out and then we get acquainted and get people relaxed because they're coming in here, they're sitting down, they're scared to death. And then if they do test positive, we really go through a very, um, a very meaningful counseling process. And if somebody is really anxious, we can always come down and get a case manager. Our case managers are, we have 15 case managers that work here, that work every day with people who are living with HIV. We have peers here, people who are also living with HIV, who can talk to people about, you know, this just is not a death sentence. This is something you can manage if you get into care, key thing, and if you take your medications. It can be managed like a chronic disease, but only that way. If you walk out the door and pretend like you didn't get tested, or you pretend like you're not positive, um, denial is a powerful tool, and a lot of people you know, really feel like that's what they have to do. But that's part of why this linkage to care system that's been set up through the City Department of Health is so powerful. They've really redesigned it okay. so that the, for example, if somebody goes to uh, the emergency room mm -hmm. and they get tested and they find out that they're positive, those people are not necessarily set up to do the counseling and everything, but they'll call that number and those people will have a case manager that will be talking to them very quickly, mm -hmm. I mean within hours. So what the, the most important thing is for people to think, First of all, no, it's not a distance. Second of all, to know they're not alone. And third of all, to get them connected with the people who can really provide them the help and the services that they need to start to take care of themselves. And uh, it's an amazing system, and I don't know if you guys have heard of Brian White funding. Yes. Um, when I was talking about the, the CDC and the government funding, Brian White funds all of our case management and our early intervention, which is our mobile testing unit, right? No. Oh, it's through HRSA. HRSA. Don't go there. Um, we actually have. But Ryan Ryan is a great organization. It's a it's great a funding, funding. Uh, organization, and it's a it's a funder of last resort. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes in, they're HIV positive, and they have a job, and they have health insurance, we'll get them a case manager to, to work with them so that they know you know what they're supposed to do. But Ryan White won't fund them. Ryan White funds the ones that don't have any of the resources that they have. You know, no perhaps no job, no home, no place to live. So that's what Ryan Wright really provides all those wraparound services as well. It's really marvelous. So to piggyback off of that then, 
the Ryan White Foundation, and, and I guess it's a government. You, you, you mentioned now. someone that doesn't have a home. Someone doesn't have really, you know, I guess the income to really be self-sufficient and supportive. Are there services or places in St. Louis where someone can actually get, in addition to Brian White, you know, housing and uh, you know, funding to just kind of get the medicine paid? I guess the medicine would make you think that the Brian White too. Yeah. But for housing and things of that nature, um, I, have you heard of doorways? I've heard of doorways. Doorways is the the primary HIV, uh, the the interfaith um, agency that provides housing for people living with mm -hmm. HIV. Uh, believe that they're uh, twenty. I think they're. 25th anniversary is, was just this year. And they used to do a, a huge auction. That, you know, yeah, they, that red. They have yeah, the red. Yeah, the red. Yeah, red, yeah, red yeah, it. yeah, it's a great party, great party. And for a good cause. Yes. And then Food Outreach, and they just had their event last weekend, okay. uh, the Taste, Tasteful Affair. And they are the ones that provide food for people living with HIV or cancer. So if you are under, if you have, you know, if you're limited income or you, you have all kinds of other issues, there are. The idea is to give you something that will stabilize you. And you can't worry about your HIV medication if you don't have anywhere to live. Right. So the, that's the concept that was framed with the Ryan White program is, okay, if in fact they need this, uh, how do we eliminate the barriers right. to care? Right. That's the objective. Eliminate the barriers to care and get people to, to see their doctor, get on their medication, stay on the medication. And I think the linkage to care is so important because to access, you know, let's say utility assistance at doorways or food services, they have to have a case manager. Yep. Wow. So if they, if they don't do that, if they're not connected with the case manager, they can't access those services. However, EFA has a, a, a project called the Beacon Project, Barrier Elimination mm -hmm. Care and Navigation. And if they've been out of care or have never been in care, we can get them into that Beacon Project. They get intensive case management. We have a community health nurse. We have peers that work with them, case managers that work with them. That is not Ryan White funded. That's funded through Age United and uh, the Corporation for National and Community Service. And we have to match those funds dollar for dollar. So our foundation giving and things like that. But that program has been incredibly successful. We had the Johns Hopkins site visit here today okay. and yesterday. Really amazing um, success because what they do, they call it the X. When they right. come in, um, you know, where the, the CD4 right. and the viral load, this program gets it right where it, it reduces the right one and raises the, raises the right, right one so that they go from very, very sick to, very to in some cases, undetectable. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, so I guess one of the most important things to take away from this is, number one, prevention. Know um, your status. status. Know your status. Um, come in and, and get, you know, get tested. So if someone wants someone watching this and wanted to come in, just may not be sure, uh, afraid, you know, like I said, the fear of unknowing, but yet they come in and do that, how, how would they get to you guys? Um, well, first of all, if they do come in for testing and they are afraid and they come in and start, they can always just have a counseling session. If okay. they're not ready, okay. then they're not ready. But it, even if they want to have a beginning conversation to start exploring that, they can still come in and do that. Um, they can call our main line at 314-645-6451. Okay. Or they can go to our website and they can schedule it online. There's a little button um, to schedule a testing appointment. And um, from that website, they can choose which testing services they want. They can choose their provider if they'd like, the, which tester. Um, or they can come in on walk-in days, which are Monday and Wednesday from 9.30 to 11 and 1 to 4. Okay. So they can just literally get on the elevator. They can find the building, which is <laughs> <laughs> uh, And the building is obviously is unmarked as well. So if they can get in the building, come up to the seventh floor on those Mondays and Wednesdays, and they can just walk in and we have people who will do the testing. And you know, we've had busy, busy days, and then we have days where we, you know, there's no wait. Um, but then it's, it takes some of that fearfulness away because they don't have to make a phone call or get anything set up. They can just walk in the door. Okay. So let me ask you a, maybe a final couple of questions. So what's the most rewarding thing with you working at the Singles Ever for AIDS? Um, That's a great thing. question. I will tell you that we, um, I think that when we're able to take some of that fear and stigma away and help people 
understand that this is it's just another disease. You know, it's just another disease. It's a preventable, treatable disease. And my reward comes um, when we have clients and people like we've been having the last two days doing their stories for us. And, and they say, we've had client, many clients that have said, you know, when I got tested and diagnosed with, tested for HIV, I was able to turn my life around. It turned my life around. It, I thought it was a death sentence, and I actually really have made changes and have taken control of my life in a way that I never had before, partly because of the services that are provided. But there's still such a huge population out there. Of, uh, of the over 5,000 people that are living with HIV in our region, uh, about 45% of them aren't in care. And and they're, so they're getting sick, and they're more likely to infect someone else. Because if you're not in, on treatment, then you're more likely to be infectious. Um, and you're more likely to develop AIDS. So whether or not they know or chose not to do anything about it. They're going to get sick. We had a, a client a while back that the mother, um, she was a 41-year-old woman who had not told, she told her mother, but she hadn't told anyone else in the family. Her son sort of figured it out on his own, and uh, she was not on medications, and she passed passed away. She got very, very sick, passed away. And the mother and the grandmother the, the, are doing this kind of story throughout the city now, saying you need to stop being afraid. You need, and they're working with black churches, which is really powerful because that's where a lot of the a lot of the fear comes from. Right. There's a lot, there's so Being much stigma. And the stigma, it's huge. Yeah. Do you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, it's funny, I was just talking about this yesterday. I There's so many rewarding things about working with clients, and lately I've just, I've been feeling a surge of gratitude when I come to work because I get to work with the team that I work with. The prevention team, what's so rewarding for me is to work with a team where every single person on it is equally as passionate about serving clients and about meeting our goals. And it's not often that you, you know, all have the same goal and all have that same passion. And, uh, you know, like just sitting down to a team meeting, it's, mm -hmm. you know, vibrant. And right. it's, that's the reason why I work here. That's great. I really do appreciate you ladies. Uh, Cheryl Oliver, Carolyn Johnson, it's been my pleasure, and thank you for allowing the time to spend with me this afternoon and uh, share what you all do for the Sample Center for AIDS. Um, we're going to post the information, you know, say at the bottom of the show about your organization website and you know phone numbers and all that. Those numbers that you gave. Okay, so. Yeah, good to know is that our website has a uh, community resources page, all kinds of information, okay. and it's about all of the different uh, agencies that can provide support. So they click that and. They and then they have uh, active clicks on all those different agencies. Uh, Cheryl and or Carolyn, uh, how can a person donate, wanted to donate to the St. Louis Effort for AIDS, a great organization that you are? Well, we really make that as easy as possible. We have on our website, um, www.stlefa.org, we have donate buttons on every page because <laughs> we want to we want to make it easy. We have people who send us checks. Um, we have people who walk in the door, and after they're tested, they 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 just are so grateful that they they give us money. And it's all just you know, it's however people want to give, but it's easy to do it from a website. If you don't have access to a computer, then send it in the mail. Okay, and and, and those of you watching this on YouTube from a, around the world, since we're on the internet. Uh, you can send in donations from anywhere around the country. We'll we gladly accept them. And again, this is Roger Hunt on Straight Talk with Roger Hunt Unscripted. Until the next time, take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you then.